Hey, welcome to a, another live stream, and we've got an awesome one today. You know, there are many tools out there that we use as cyclists uh, to help us uh, go on our big epic rides. And one of my favorite is Ride With GPS. I think their slogan is uh, get inspired, not lost. Is that right, Kevin? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> uh, and today we're going to do a deeper dive with Ride With GPS if you're not familiar with it. And I'm a little partial to them just because when we lived in Portland, their first office, or at least I think it was their first office, was less than a mile from our apartment. So we'd go there frequently and, and hang out and grab some beers. Yep. Uh, they've since moved to a different office. They've gotten a larger bunch of new features that we're going to talk about today. But before we jump in, I do want to thank our Patreon supporters. You guys make this content possible. It allows me to uh, pretty much do this full time and bring in interesting guests. So thanks again, Patreon supporters. And if you guys like this content and want to see it going, please consider joining us on Patreon. Uh, you get access to ask your own questions on these interviews, as well as uh, some pretty sweet discounts with uh, lots of brands that we've interviewed on the channel. So with all that said, welcome to the YouTube channel, Kevin from Ride With GPS. <laughs> Hello, thanks for having me, good to be here. I like your background. <laughs> yeah, as we discussed just before this, it was the most clever thing I could uh, think of. Um, nice. <laughs> especially with my translucent e shirt. Right. <laughs> so hopefully it's not too distracting. <laughs> Uh, so there's lots of GPS options out there on the market. What sets Ride, w Ride with GPS apart from the other other platforms? Uh, I mean, I think it's primarily our ability to stay focused to uh, the people in our community and the tools and features that they want us to make. Uh, you know, they're the only ones that we have to listen to. And if we don't listen to them, then, you know, our product suffers and business suffers. So uh, we're very receptive to feedback. We have the best community in the world uh, who are, you know, very into what we're doing. They're, you know, they're kind of, they're committed to our success and committed to giving us feedback and helping us along the way. So the things that we end up doing are oftentimes very integrated into the things that everybody uh, are asking us to do, uh, which is not terribly difficult because we're also just, you know, kind of run of the mill cyclists. And these things are oftentimes the things that we're wanting to do. So it all, you know, all makes sense and it all meshes really well for us. Yeah. Yeah. I know that, um, I can, I can attest to the fact that almost everyone there rides and you know, I visited their office many times and there's, they've got bikes on bikes on bikes. And you also do a, a pretty cool thing, I think for new employees, like after a certain period of time, uh, they get some kind of allowance to, to buy a new bike. Uh, yeah, we do a bike stipend for new employees. Uh, it is important for them to, you know, have the option, uh, which will provide to help them, you know, get out and, you know, whether it's, you know, for the better or worse, we have to test out our own products. So, you know, we get, <laughs> we try to encourage riding as much as we possibly can. Uh, but we're also out there always what we call dog fooding, you know, in particular out on, you know, our mobile app. Um, so, you know, we want to make that as easy as possible for, for the folks that work here. Cool. So I'm curious, you know, with COVID, have you seen, um, people using the platform increase or decrease? Cause it sounds as if they're, you know, there's more people buying bikes, but then at the same time, people can't travel as far to ride them. So how does that, how, how has that affected site usage? Yeah, it's been kind of a, you know, a, a pretty wild mixed bag, uh, Activity is way up right now. Um, you know, route planning sessions are as high as they've ever been uh, for, you know, a number of reasons. One, people are just sitting at home and they're dreaming of the stuff that they want to do when the time comes for them to be able to do it. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's good and it keeps people engaged. Um, on the other hand, you know, new signups have kind of, you know, trailed off or they weren't where we projected them to be because, you know, there are less people, you know, maybe, you know, some people are, aren't as focused on that right now, you know, maybe, you know, as, as a parent, I'm not cycling all that much. I'm very focused, you know, on, you know, my job and then my home life and my two kids. And, you know, in another world, I probably wouldn't be planning the amount of routes that I would normally be planning. Um, so, you know, it's, 
we feel very fortunate um, in the position that we're in to have, you know, again, a really great community of people who are committed to supporting us. Um, and then some other really cool things that have kind of, you know, through bizarre circumstances happened. Um, a couple months ago, the number one route planning platform in Japan shut its doors. Um, and we saw this just enormous spike of new accounts and routes being transferred over from registered users and registered routes in Japan. Um, so, you know, just kind of funky, quirky things like that have helped really help bolster, you know, what's going on right now. Yeah. Cool. Um, I know that we use uh, Ride with GPS. You offer, you know, beyond just what I think most people see, but a pretty cool, robust package uh, for, for just mapping in general. If you guys have ever stumbled upon our coffee outside map where we pin all the coffee outsides in the country and how to contact the people running them, that's been powered by Ride with GPS um, as well as like a couple of other routes that we have online. So I think you guys, you know, from what I've seen, have you know, some pretty awesome tools uh, if you're just a casual user and just want to record your own rides, but also almost like enterprise level things that you can do with the platform. <laughs> Yeah, we've got, you know, we're, you know, the majority of everything is definitely, you know, our consumer platform, uh, mobile app route planner. Uh, but yeah, we also have, you know, a couple of full-time staff who work on our organization's program. So we have accounts and tools specifically for cycling clubs, tour operators, tourism organizations, and event planners. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, we've always kind of said it's, it's great because we're, we're still, we're small enough to where we can dedicate the one-on-one -on -one focused time to all of these organizations um, and, you know, help them, you know, deliver a really good product to their members or their riders, which also serves as a nice marketing channel for us as well. Um, you know, we get our routes served up, you know, a lot of these, actually probably all the accounts uh, have the ability to give away our navigation tools for free. So, you know, whether you're a big Grand Fondo rider or you're somebody who's maybe doing, you know, your first, uh, MS, uh, you know, 10 K ride or whatever, you know, they're able to, the organizers are able to provide, you know, some of those nice tools so people can feel more comfortable out on the road, whether they want a printed cue sheet or they want our spoken turn by turn navigation out of our mobile app, they can get all of those things. They don't need to pay for them and they can have a really good experience. Mm -hmm. I think we talked, it might've been the last time we talked, but you did some, uh, work with Mid South, or back then it was Land Run, helping them kind of coordinate help <laughs> on the course. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I uh, have done it now. This is the fourth year. Um, did it remotely for two years, and then flew down last year to do it in person, and was scheduled to fly down this year again. Uh, and that was literally the weekend that all of the COVID stuff really came to, you know, ahead. Um, and just pulled the plug at the last moment. Um, it didn't go down, but we're still able to do it virtually uh, nearly as, as well as we can when we're in person. Um, so they have uh, the Red Dirt Jeep Club, which provides their SAG, uh, SAG resources for all of their riders, uh, which is generally three dozen, you know, heavy duty four by four Jeeps um, and just the best group of folks that I've ever been around to, you know, they just volunteer for this. They use their Jeeps for I don't know, 16 plus hours during the day. People get in. They, you know, they completely destroy their Jeeps with the red clay dirt uh, that the that the event is infamous for. Um, anyway, the Jeeps use our live logging service from our mobile app, so we can track them in real time. So I would sit in a command center, and uh, all of the Jeeps would have our mobile app running. So they have a driver and a navigator. And they have our phone running with live logging going so we can track them in real time. And then when we get a call, they have a couple of numbers that folks can call for SAG. Um, they'll call and be like, I need a pickup at mile X or I'm by road. I'm at triple X road or whatever, which is a very famous road down on the course uh, most right. years. Um, we can see where the Jeeps are and we can dispatch appropriate, you know, resources in, you know, instantaneously. Um, and it's, it's really been cool. There's been a number of kind of very close calls where we've been able to actually mitigate a lot of that by having a super fast response time. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been great. Bobby's wonderful. Sally's wonderful. Everyone down there are just, 
you know, the most generous, heartfelt people. It's, you know, for me personally, it's a real treat to get to, to get to work it every year. Yeah. 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 I thought when you, when we talked about that, I forget when it was, I thought that was the coolest thing because a lot of people don't think of, you know, how a platform can be integrated with an event and in such a important way. So I felt like, you know, people should know the story. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I appreciate that. And it's cool because they still get cell phone service down there. Um, yeah. You know, whereas, you know, an event like, like we work with SVT Gravel out of Steamboat, um, where we would use those resources, but they go into the middle of nowhere and, you know, the mobile app needs to connect to our services so we can see our service so we can see everything in real time. Um, and, you know, it's not possible, unfortunately, because no one hardly, you don't have cell phones coverage out there for 70 plus percent of the time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good. I look forward to it every year. <laughs> Cool. Well, speaking of gravel, uh, I, th I think uh, my my clickbait thumbnail title for for this live stream was you know the pro pro gravel uh, routing tips from Ride with GPS. Uh, so I think you're going to share your screen and and give us some high level things and like a peek at at new features that a bunch of uh, gravel route route uh, nerds will will enjoy. Yeah. Um, let me get this going. I will preface this. Um, with let's see all right can you see that now yeah okay good i'm gonna tuck that over to the side and hopefully i don't work on that too much um i will preface all this with you know we've gotten a number of surface type requests and features requests and questions over the years um and i will say that we are very close to uh starting to implement some big new surface type features into the route planner um, the first of those, uh, will, are probably four to six weeks out, give or take. Um, I, we never want to use dates cause we never want to promise anything cause these things are very fluid. And I, even saying something as general as that, I'll probably get a lashing or two from, from right. us. uh, but, uh, yeah, so we're running a big, uh, popularity based routing update on our backend right now to really improve the routing service that we have in the planner. And it's a two and a half week to three week uninterrupted continuous process to do that. Um, and then once that is done, we will be updating the new routing service with uh, surface type information. So what that will mean is as you plan your route, um, if the route line does go over and what's what we would identify as an unpaved road or trail, um, then we will change what the route line looks like to denote that you have gone off road and mm -hmm. that you are now you know, planning on a paved road. We'll also have some styling in the elevation profile uh, to let you know that what you are, you know, the, that, that section of the elevation profile is unpaved as well. And then we'll have some, uh, you know, percentage stats to let you know that you are doing, you know, you've planned 50% gravel, 50% paved, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so how, that, how, go ahead. How does it, is it working off of like a, a municipal database of, of road surfaces? How does it know like when is something paved or unpaved? So we have, um, it's all built into OpenStreetMap database, um, okay. which is where we'll get the information. Uh, the, you know, a lot of the work is kind of consolidating all the different categories uh, into, you know, something that's digestible, you know. Somebody doesn't want to, somebody doesn't need to know type three dirt versus type two dirt versus <laughs> class A type something, something. Um, right. You know, they so want it's not to, super granular. <laughs> right, exactly. So we have to, you know, kind of redirect some of these, you know, not bizarro, but, you know, redirect some of these very obscure uh, categories into something that's more um, palatable. So, um, so yeah, there's just isn't, you know, a thousand different route. <laughs> Routes. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we'll get all that information and consolidate them down and then have a really nice uh, cohesive package. So folks will, you know, plan and they'll know everything that's going on um, right. in the uh, in the interim kind of what we uh, what I've always suggested as a rule of thumb is to we still uh, have <clears throat> we still offer Google based mapping uh, here with map and satellites. Um, and uh, Street View, so down here, the little little guy, little guy icon, uh, works in both of those map styles, as well as all the other map styles that we uh, that we have. So what I always tell folks is to grab, click, and grab the little man, 
and you hold your mouse down, but you don't, you don't let go of them. You just kind of hold them around. Um, and as kind of a general rule of thumb, anything in blue, Google's videotaped and uploaded um, into their back end. And for the most part, that would denote something that is paved. Um, whereas they're doing it kind of more and more, but generally, or it used to be that they wouldn't, they would stop at gravel roads and they wouldn't take their little cars on gravel roads and street view those. So um, here we are in Willamette Valley and we can kind of see a lot of that. And I can see Bethel Heights Road here where, uh, so it's got, I hold it right here and it gives me a little preview and it's paved, it's paved, it's paved. I can get up here and see that it stops. So I'll actually let go and I'll drop it. And sure enough, ah, okay. there we are, we're right there. Um, and it does in fact break up right there from paved to unpaved. Um, I can get out of there and I can also go back and check satellite, um, see where I'm at here. So we're right there. So I can zoom in go all the way in and you can still kind of tell here from satellite view. Um, I like to always look for kind of a center line and then see where that center line ends. And then that kind of gives me a good indicator of, of a changing surface type. Mm -hmm. I also found that that view is really helpful to know if there's a gate crossing, because typically you can either see some form of the gate or a gate casting a shadow. Um, yes, know, sometimes, shadows. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes I've even been lucky with probably not a lot in this area. Um, Oh, I don't know. There's a Google sphere, which is the little circles here um, hmm. that are all, can you see that little circle right there? Yeah. Yeah. So those are also kind of street viewable uh, things, which oftentimes are businesses. Um, oh, come back here. Uh, businesses, uh, but also trailheads, uh, lookouts. Uh, I've gotten lucky and I've found some people who've taken photos of gates and stuff like that. It's like, oh, that's, you know, that's a jackpot right there. That's really cool. Um, so you can also kind of get lucky and in super popular areas. Um, yeah. I guess not Willamette Valley, not super popular with selfies. Um, but, you know, if we were to go over to Portland or something and zoom in, then we'd see, we'd see quite a bit. Every three feet, there'd be a selfie dot. <laughs> this is true. And we've also, I've killed some time and just kind of went to really obscure spots and seen some pretty wild photos that people have uploaded because they're, I don't, Google's not checking all the things that are being uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we lost your, lost your audio, Kevin. Lost my audio? Oh, wait, or were you not talking? I wasn't talking. Okay. I just, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, I couldn't tell if your mouth was moving or not because it makes the heads really small. Sorry. Sorry. Probably the background again. <laughs> cool. So that's a that's a pretty good hack for for using Street View. Um, anything else that um, do you want to jump into the? Do you have any other gravel specific tips, or do you want to jump into some of the the cool new root tools? Uh, we can jump into the new roots if there's no questions so far on gravel stuff. Um, I, guess, I guess one thing, like I know that I've used this uh, a lot, but other people may not be aware of is, you know, it's Ride with GPS is a great place to not only track your own rides, but discover new rides. And you have different ways of discovering rides, right? There's uh, the ambassador routes and other, like what other things... What other ways can people find gravel routes on, on the platform? People can certainly, yeah, a number of ways to find stuff. Um, we do have the ambassador directory, which I can show you here. We do have a find page here. Um, excuse me. Uh, and you can certainly do, you know, add in keywords. Uh, lots of good ways where you can uh, change the criteria of your search. If I want something, you know, super big with super big elevation, or I want, you know, something that's not super big with not a ton of elevation, I can certainly do those things. Um, the way we do it is uh, anytime somebody searches uh, our database here of routes and rides, and I'll use Sacramento as an example. Um, oh, I guess I'll have to reset this. Uh, we have the ambassador program and we surface uh, oh, I guess there's no gravel. I kept that keyword in. No gravel in uh, Sacramento. 
Uh, so that's why the that's why the keywords are going. Um, we will surface the ambassador content up to the top. So, um, nope, don't do that. I don't want that. Let's go down here. Let's get back here. So when I return Sacramento, um, you know, here's 121,000 results for routes and rides. Obviously, that doesn't do anything for me uh, if I'm a consumer that's searching. So what we try to do is make our uh, best attempt to give you the most relevant stuff at the top or the most highly curated stuff at the top. So the first thing that we do are we surface ambassador routes up to the top. Um, so 121,000 results, but at the very top are uh, the ambassador routes from Visit Lodi and then uh, one from Hammer and Wheels here, which is a local cycling club out of Roseville. Um, and then more uh, options down here. So these aren't, uh, these are not ambassador routes, but they are highly viewed um, <clears throat> reputable routes. So we have a little eye counter here, which is number of pay views. So you can see here from the Davis Bike Club, almost 10,000 views, 7,000 views. You know, these are right. popular routes that have been written and looked at a lot. So I'm curious, is the ambassador program still open? Let's say someone has is, is just heard about this and they want to share routes in their area. What's the process to become a, an ambassador? Uh, the ambassador program is very open. Uh, Chad here at the office works with our ambassadors on a daily basis, uh, both you know, getting applications, approving them, helping them get their profile set up, and then helping them get through the program and get, uh, get routes into the system. Um, you know, there's really, you know, there's not really the only general rule we have is not approving a million routes in one area because that's the whole goal <laughs> of the ambassador program. You know, we don't want 121,000 routes in Sacramento. We want, you know, a handful of really good road rides, a handful, handful of good gravel routes, a handful of great family friendly routes. Um, and generally, you know, a combination of, you know, a few different ambassadors in an area will cover all of those uh, all of those things. So here's our ambassador program. These clusters here uh, represent ambassador routes. And as you zoom in closer, once we get in close enough, we have, uh, we'll surface the actual track lines themselves. Oh, cool. Um, and then if by, we're on a bigger screen, those clicks will generate uh, these routes down here um, as the search results. So if we were able to, if we went up here and clicked a big cluster, <clears throat> excuse me, then we'd get you know quite a bit of routes. And additionally, there is search criteria up here where you can filter by keyword, ambassador, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's really popular. There's tons of great routes. Um, I search routes in here all the time. Um, right. It's, you know, there's, we give them, you know, a better, they have better content. So um, let's zoom in, you know, every, the ambassador routes are, you know, done by a, you know, the signature photo postcard um, is what they are. So you can really get a good view um, and a good idea of what they're like. Uh, we've got a little uh, bucket list here somewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah so it also looks like they're a little bit different from just like a regular route insofar as they're a little bit more fleshed out. I see that the ambassadors take time to write copy. They've also add, added POIs, like where the camp on this one. Uh, yeah, we have kind of a list of, you know, requirements that we want um you know yes a description and we people that create routes we have you know we can give them a template or they can start from blank we ask that they have some points of interest in there uh these are kind of interactive tools here so i can you know as i mouse over these things uh you know i can see you can see it highlights this is called a, a section so you can see it uh, highlights the section down in the uh, elevation profile I can click these points so I can get into specific points, click these POIs to get specific POIs. So, um, you know, it's a good way for someone who has a stake in their community uh, to put together good routes, uh, include businesses that they would like someone coming to their town to uh, go to and support. Cool. Um, so before we go on, we're about 25 minutes in and uh um, supposedly, this is a good time to to ask if you're en enjoying the live stream on YouTube chat to give it thumbs up, to give it some view velocity so that this uh, video keeps spreading around. 
Um, so one of the kind of the, the newer ish, maybe tweaks that I saw recently that I thought was super helpful was the ability to trace a, a route so you can make it your own. Like you, you discover a pre-existing route and let's say you don't like the endpoint or where it goes, you can make some edits a lot easier. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we now have two ways to, uh, two ways to trace a route. So we've always had, so let's say I just kind of stumbled upon this route. This is actually the, probably most of the Willamette Valley scenic bikeway. Um, so if I wanted to do this, um, let's say this was the route, but let's say maybe I wanted to start from the opposite end. I could reverse the route, um, you know, with a quick, quick route tool here, but let's say I wanted to maybe do half of it or do something else. So I can use the trace tool here and we have the option to auto trace or we can manual trace. So I'm going to click manual trace. What this does is gray the route out. I can zoom in, I can click. And then I can just simply click along the route ah. and trace it. And, um, you know, let's say, oh, maybe I did want to go to this camp spot, or maybe this is a point of interest, or maybe this is a friend's house or whatever. Um, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not coupled to this exact route line. I can follow it as much as I want, and I can deviate as much as I want. It's um, so good. Like the old, old way, I'd have to have like two windows and try to match the road, <clears throat> you know, Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so the new thing we just uh, released earlier this month is the auto trace. So what I can do is let's, I, I really like this example. So we can go to uh, Japanese hollow so I can find any route, find any ride, it uh, doesn't matter and bring it into the planner. So I'll click add to planner. Um, have you done Japanese hollow Russ? I have not. One of the OMTM. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah. Really, really good the best, just the best gravel. Anyway, um, I can, uh, I lost my mouse. There we go. So I have this, this is actually, uh, this is a route, but it doesn't have a cue sheet. Um, so let's say this is somebody's ride that doesn't have a cue sheet. It doesn't matter, but I want to go do this. And I want a cue sheet. So I can come over here and click trace, but this time I'm going to click auto trace and you'll get a little status, um, as the system runs the trace. Ah. And we instantaneously trace the route exactly like it is. And you can now see that you now have a full cue sheet. Um, and let's see, we are, you know, three tenths of a mile off. So if I were to zoom right. in, you know, probably just cutting out some little route spurs for pullouts or whatever. Um, right. Or actually this would be, yeah, this would actually be not going, uh, the routing service wouldn't want you to ride the opposite way on a one-way street. So we stick you off on this, on this street right here. So, right. Uh, so why... So for people that, that may not know, like why is having the cue sheet element important? Is that what does that is that what gives you the turn by turn in a GPS device? Yeah. So for us, this, all of these things. So if you were to use our mobile app to navigate, uh, our app would give you voice navigation for every single one of these turns. Mm -hmm. uh, if you did not have this, you could still navigate. Uh, but you would just be following a breadcrumb trail. Um, you okay. would just have the track line. Um, so in this case, and how we all ride, and how a lot of folks ride, uh, is I would trace the route. I would save it. It would instantly be available on my phone. I could go out and navigate, and um, I could leave my phone screen off because we're just going to speak the turn-by-turn -turn directions to you. And there's a number mm -hmm. of different settings that you can have. So we have... Uh, at, nearing, and far for cues. So um, I'll do this. I uh, don't need distance markers, but I'll turn cues on. So if I were riding and approaching this left-hand cue here, um, after this cue right here, so we got four mile, four mile marker right there, and then this one is about 16. So after this turn, our app would say, in 12 miles, turn left. So that gives you kind of the confidence that, oh, I don't have to do anything for 12 miles. I don't have to make a turn. I can literally space out, think about anything I want. I don't have to worry about where I'm going. I just follow this road. Um, as you approached this and got a quarter mile away, we would give you another audio notification that said, in a quarter mile, turn left. And then as you got approximately two blocks, give or take what speed you're going at, um, we would then say, it, uh, turn, we give you an audio chime and say, turn left onto Japanese hollow road or first road or whatever that road would be. Right. Um, so that's the kind of the value of the cue sheet. Um, in addition to other, uh, like Wahoo devices. So you mm -hmm. could 
wirelessly sync your routes to Wahoo devices super quick and easy and get a breadcrumb trail to follow. But if your route had turn by turn directions, we will also sync those turn by turn directions onto your Wahoo. And that would give you a beep and display, uh, display the actual street names for turns on your device. Right. I know that this question inevitably will come up, but let's say you're riding in a place with no cellular service. You, you can cache the route with the turn by turn on the app. Most definitely, yeah. um, which is what we would always, whether you're even, you know, whether you're going someplace uh, without cell phone signal or not, um, we would always recommend uh, downloading routes for offline use. So yes, any, a ride or a route, doesn't matter. You can do both. Uh, in the mobile app, you can download and then we will give you the whole status bar. We will download the track line we will download the map tiles, and then we will download the voice navigation as well. So you download everything for offline use. You stick your phone into airplane mode. You launch navigation. We'll record all of your stats, uh, just like if you were connected to Wi-Fi, and we'll give you updating map tiles, the breadcrumb trail to follow, and all of the voice navigation, just like if you were connected to Wi-Fi as well. And you get to use almost no battery on your phone because your phone's in airplane mode, and it's not searching for cell towers or Wi-Fi or whatever you want. All right. Cool. Uh, well, what other uh, new features should people know about? Uh, <clears throat> a lot of cool stuff. Uh, this, as we were talking right before we went live, um, <laughs> this last month, May, has been our probably our most active route planner month maybe ever. Um, we've really doubled down and gotten to work and released a bunch of awesome new features that folks have been asking us for for a while. And a lot of stuff that we have been wanting to personally put uh, put into the route planner our, uh, ourselves. Um, the first started with kind of a redesign of the route planner, so we consolidated a bunch of buttons and kind of cleaned up a lot of the a lot of the UI on the screen uh, to make planning kind of more intuitive and easier. Um, in addition to some new tools, so we covered Auto Trace. Uh, so Auto Trace was really cool. Uh, just released. Uh, it was soft launched on last Friday, but just uh, announced uh, this morning via a site-wide email is our new right-click menu. So we've mm -hmm. got buttons over here for, you know, I can add cue sheets, I can drop POIs, I can do control points. Um, and I've got some other uh, more powerful tools called split route here and some other things. But now instead of saying, oh, I want to split route, well, maybe I don't, or I want to drop a POI and then a custom queue, and I'd have to come be coming back to the right sidebar a lot. Now all I need to do is right click anywhere oh, on the map, okay. whether it's on the map or the track line and do a bunch of cool stuff. So let's say I want to uh, add a control point and then maybe I want to add a control point up here. And now I can, I've locked off my route now I can actually drag it over here in case I want to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe I can zoom in and I'll right click right here and I'll add in a custom queue. So we have queues that are generated by the routing service. So those are turn right, turn left, what have you. Um, I, you can also add in any custom cues that you want as well. So let's say right here at this split where I'm kind of maybe going rogue and maybe I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Um, I can uh, add some kind of a custom cue here. So I'll say, you know, danger, this right turn might not be a good idea and spell correctly. And I'll save it. <laughs> and sure enough, there's the cue. Um, and, you know, you can add in custom cues for, you know, in, literally anything you want. And our mobile app will read anything that you type into that box. Um, nice. So as I approach this, the, mo the app will say, you know, da -da -da -da, danger, this right turn might not be a good idea. Or there is, you know, there's, it's been reported that there's an angry dog ahead on the right. Or, you can know. You, can you select the voice it reads it back at? <laughs> uh, you can't uh, actually. You can in your phone settings. So we oh, okay. default, we default to the uh, uh, what's her name. So Siri actually has I think a na like a name for the voice. It's like Sally or something. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, like pa it. Patrick Stewart voice though. Wow. Like <laughs> Unfortunately, that hasn't. That hasn't right. been it. But yeah, there's a number of things. There's like yeah. British guy. There's all sorts of. <laughs> 
things that you can choose. So not with our app, but your phone settings, you can change the voice of what you, the phone talks to you and that will, our uh, text-to-speech service will pick that up and get read aloud in that. Uh, yeah. What does the split root do? Does that break it up into a multi-day thing or does that just... That gives you the ability to uh, break it up. So let's go back here and I want to remove this route from here because we just want to work on the one with Q. So now I'm back to square one. So let's say if you're someone like me who maybe can't do this whole thing uh, in a single day, or maybe this is a longer route, and you say, oh, maybe this is a decent, uh, oh, there's water there. Maybe I want to camp. So mm -hmm. I can click this, and I can click split route. So uh, what this has done is now giving me two routes on the screen. So what I did is I just split them right down the middle. I have my first route here, and I have my second route here. So maybe I wanted to split that route right there. And zoom all the way in. I'll right click again and I'll click. Actually, I want uh, show latitude longitude because I want to add this in to a new POI I'm going to add. So I'll click lat long, copy. Now I'll click add to cue sheets um, and we'll do camping uh, possible campsite spell again uh, in description, paste in that lat long, and there we are. So now I've got this, I can come over here, I can okay. set the name, day one, okay. Let's go over here. Now I've got the second part of the route. Mm -hmm. I can set my name, day two, okay. And now I can work on the second part of my uh, second, second day or second part of my route. And if I wanted to, I could come in here and uh, split it again. So, you know, I could yeah. take some ACA route that I got, and then I could just some, split it in. Some What's that? Swallow route. <laughs> or some things that I'll never, ever, ever be able to do, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, so I'm Sarah's yeah. routes. And uh, yeah, chop them up into things that are manageable by me personally. Maybe I just want to go 50 miles a day, um, or I can split them up by, you know, stop over town or whatever. Uh, you can split things up as much as you want. And if I didn't want that, so we have, you know, the active route on the screen. And then we have, uh, you know, the next route that's grayed out, which isn't active, but a green dot uh, that represents the start of that. All I need to do is to click that green dot and I will reconnect the pieces. Um, oh, cool. And if I wanted to, I can come over here to day one. Let's say I am in fact going to go for this. Then I will click the green dot, and I'm back to just one whole route like that. Right. So, so uh, I saw there was a, a question in the chat. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, but what's the, what do you get for the free account and how much and what's the difference between that and the, the paid account? So the free account, uh, you do get the route planner. Um, you can create routes. You can do some, uh, you can do some simple editing. So let's clear the map here. I will confirm that. So, oops, let's delete you. Let's go back to a uh, route planner. Now we've got our route planner. Um, so you can plan routes. Uh, you do have the ability to uh, <clears throat> kind of do some dragging and dropping uh, <clears throat> with the route lines. Uh, one of the key features that you get with uh, a premium account is the uh, selection tools over here. So. Um, let's say I'll zoom in here. Maybe I wanted to take a little detour here. Uh, maybe I wanted to go up to this road. So right now, you know, it may not be, you know, it might be a little hard to kind of drag and drop this route. So I can mm -hmm. click undo, but with paid account, I can come here. So I'm going to click the elevation profile here. I'm going to hold down my mouse and oops, let go. Unfortunately, I'm going to hold down my mouse, select this. Now we have these new selection tools over here. So what I'm gonna actually do is click delete selection. So that mm -hmm. deletes out that section, gives me now kind of like what we have in the split route scenario, gives me two little pieces. Uh, and now I can come over and click the route here. And then when I'm satisfied, I can click it and join back up. And now I easily chopped out the middle of a route um, right. and did a quick reroute. Cool. So, um, yeah, so you definitely, you know, we have a lot of stuff that we offer for free. Um, we also offer a free trial when uh, folks sign up. Uh, we're 
very we we want people we're confident in this in the tools that we're building for our community um, and we want people to try them out uh to make sure that they're the right tools for them for sure right and how much is how much is a premium membership uh premium membership is eighty dollars a year uh, and it gets you everything on our website and our mobile app um so you get all the tools in our route planner in addition to everything syncing up with the mobile app so uh the voice navigation in the mobile app uh, we released uh, our route planner in the mobile app in uh, beginning of December last year. You get the offline maps capabilities, and then you also get uh, live logging in the mobile app as well, uh, which we have a really cool demo. So this is uh, so you can start live logging if you have cell service and uh, share a link to your ride, and people can track your and. <laughs> I didn't even think about this, but our demo is actually Japanese <laughs> hollow again. Um, but so I go out and I start Japanese hollow and I start recording and navigating and I live log. Um, and uh, I can share a link to anybody. I can post it on Facebook. I can text it. I can do whatever I want. And it doesn't matter if I have an account or not. Uh, I can click that link, open that link. And this is exactly what I will see. So if I'm navigate, if I'm navigating, and I share the link with you, then you will see the route that I'm navigating. You will see my progress. You'll see photos that uh, I've taken and they're geotagged to the exact locations that I took the photos. Um, you can see my updating estimated completion time here. So um, we have estimated time when you're planning routes and when you're recording in the, uh, or when you're navigating in the mobile app. And after like 10 minutes, we'll actually use the heuristics of your uh, your ride in progress to update your estimated ride to completion. So if I stopped for a super long lunch and maybe had an extra beer or something, then we would actually update your estimated time to completion, you know, on a per beer basis, if you will. It's a very <laughs> bad example. Uh, but that, not only will that be reflected in your metrics in the mobile app, but that will also be reflected here. So somebody could see the actual time you're going to. Is there, is there a way to get, multiple blue dots on one map just to have like a, your own like pseudo like leaderboard thing going yeah. on or uh no there is and that's what we that's kind of what we do for uh land the the mid-south folks um mm -hmm. how could i get because it sounds like good value i mean for 80 bucks you know if you can do that it's like having a, a spot tracker and like you know more sophisticated gps device <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not sure where I'm on a new computer from the working from home stuff. Uh, there is, I guess I can show you an older photo of this. So yes, so if you are, uh, you know, we have some social elements to uh, to the to our platform, and one of those is you can become friends with people. And if you're friends with someone, then if they plan a new route or record a new ride, then you'll get a notification in your feed and see what they've done. And you can check it out and you can leave comments on it. Uh, another aspect of becoming friends is uh, group live logging. Um, okay. Where do we, do we still have that here? So this is what we do with Land Run where Everyone is part of, you know, in their sense, you can do it with if you're friends with someone or you can do it if you're part of an organization. So like a cycling club has okay. approved members. And okay. if those members are all live logging at the same time, then they will all show up on each other's uh, group live logging. They will all show up on each other's phone screens. So okay. similar to this. Right. Um, okay. So if I was now, this is this is what the app looked like a thousand years ago, um, <laughs> but for argument's sake, uh, yeah. So if you and I, since we're friends, if you and I were both now, uh, live logging, um, I would see where you are on my screen and you would see where you are on my screen as well. So that's what we do for the land run folks is I see, you know, approximately 50 different numbered icons on the screen. So when someone calls in and says, oh, so-and-so needs help at mile 52, I can look at it. Um, I can click on the closest icon and get the name of the person. And then I can contact that person uh, to let them know about a, a possible pickup situation. Yeah. Uh, and similar to this, I can click on any of these icons on the screen and see that, you know, this is Kevin Purdy 
this is Colin, this is me, et cetera. So um, yeah, if everybody's live logging, um, then yeah, you can see where everybody is. You can see how far back someone is or how close uh, you have to catching somebody. Yeah. And you guys have a, a YouTube channel that goes kind of in, in the weeds with some of the more specific features, right? Yeah, we've got a big YouTube channel. Um, I would say, you know, another thing that we're known for is our customer support, um, both our help system. I don't know how many help articles we have, but it's it's an astronomical <laughs> amount. Um, but more importantly, we have full-time support. We have support seven days a week. Um, I think anybody that's interacted with our support would attest to kind of the level of commitment that we have to our community. It doesn't matter if you're a paid member or you're a free member, you're going to get a response uh, that day, that day mm -hmm. being between, you know, if you write in before, you know, six or 7 PM during Pacific time or whatever, then we're going to respond back to you. Um, yeah. So yeah, we have a, you know, a, a vast help system, have our support. And then, yeah, we absolutely have, uh, a bunch of videos uh, that we're currently redoing because we've done a bunch of redesign stuff over the last year or two, um, but all yeah. sorts of, uh, Oh boy, can you hear that? Uh Oh, <laughs> that was our, uh, <laughs> Christopher, I'm gonna, I'm, what's that? I'm going to uh, ask you some questions in the, in the chat here. Yeah. Um, so Steven from Eugene asks, uh, I think you answered this, but uh, when is the road surface stat feature going live? So you said uh, maybe is that Steve Lamper. Uh, uh, I don't know. Is uh, Stephen from Eugene? I don't know. I forget his uh, last maybe name. Maybe Steve Lamper from Eugene. He does Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> um, as previously stated, I cannot give a specific <laughs> time, um, but we are working on it as fast as we possibly can. Um, Popularity-based routing will be here in a few weeks, and the surface type, in terms of routing line, will be here hopefully, you know, a few short weeks after that. So that is, so you know, big number two. That's number two on the big list. So, po so really quickly, what's popularity-based routing for people that don't know? So I was gonna try to, I was gonna try to find an example of this. Um, definitely not gonna get something out here in the country. <laughs> um, that would that, that would really make sense. Uh, somebody sometimes, you know. Let's see here. Um, Sometimes the routing service will kind of want to, I mean, we can kind of use this in an example. Um, let's turn on bike paths because we still offer bike paths. So uh, this, yeah, I can maybe use it. Anyway, so the routing service wants us to do this here when I have cycling, uh, cycling mode toggled on. Uh, but we have the data to show that riders actually don't go this route. Riders actually go up Bethany Road here, mm -hmm. and with the popularity-based routing, you know they will get an appropriate route like this. So instead of you know, there's about a hundred different little turns here trying to get the person on this path, which in this case kind of makes sense because we want to get them into this bike path. And I've been on this bike path. You've actually probably been on this bike path. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. nice. Um, but in a different scenario where this wasn't a bike path, it was just maybe a side street. Sometimes the routing service will try to get you off of what it considers maybe a busy road and kind of put you into a neighborhood. And sometimes it will just then put you back on the road because the neighborhood runs out four blocks later. But we know we have the data to show that people aren't doing this. Even if we try to get them to do it based on the routing, they don't do it. So we'll update the routing appropriately. Um, gotcha. And we have, you know, we have an infinite number of data to, you know, to back all this stuff up. So, you know, we spent a bunch of time running the algorithm uh, for both urban-based routes and rides, in addition to rural-based routes and rides, to come to a really, uh, to come to a really good plan for this. And we are super, super, super duper excited to get this to get this released. Cool. So David K here in the Zoom chat asks, um, he's in the market for a bike computer. Which bike computer? platform does ride with gps have better user experience when riding and in ease of use something like the wahoo roam or latest garmin edge um i would be remiss if i didn't say check out our mobile app first. <laughs> um the phone we, the phone you are i know you already have a phone um and i get some people don't want to put a phone on their bars um 
that's fine. People, you know, I, you can stick it in your pouch or in a saddlebag or in your frame bag and the voice navigation will read things aloud. We have Bluetooth in our app. You can pair earbuds or a speaker on your phone and have the voice navigation read aloud to you. You can download stuff for offline use so you don't destroy your battery. All of these things are there. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do want a dedicated cycling computer, then yeah, we've really had fantastic response with the Wahoo lineup. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's good. It's easy. Um, if we're talking about us, we have the wireless, we have the wireless sync to Wahoo devices over Wi-Fi, So you can sync things, you can pin them to get starred routes. You can bump those up to the top of the list on your Wahoo. Um, people are really, you know, people really enjoy it there. We see very few complaints from Wahoo users. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to open it up to video questions. So to you guys in uh, the zoom room, if you've got a question for, for Kevin, you want them to elaborate on the feature or something. Um, okay, we've got one from Brian. You got the floor. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for doing this. Very helpful. Thank um, you. Happy to. My question is, if you're using the app on your phone and you're using the voice guided, uh, you know, turn by turn directions, does that override any music that you're listening to? Uh, yeah. So the ter- it's what it's called ducking. Um, so you can definitely. I listen to music uh, when I. Uh, when I ride, I'm a big jam band guy and I love listening to tunes and being in the middle of nowhere. So that's what I'm doing. I, I have Spotify. I'm playing I'm, my phone's in airplane mode. I'm playing Spotify. Uh, and yes, when a when we are going to give you an audible notification, we will duck your music. We will speak the uh, speak the audible notification to you. And then we will unduck it and return you back to your music or your podcast or whatever you're listening to. And this is done both if your phone screen is open or if your phone screen is locked. Um, we will produce a visual notification on top of your lock screen of the turn in addition to the audible notification as well. Cool. cool. Good question. All right, we've Great got question. a question here from uh, JP. You've got the floor. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Kevin, can you talk about segments and how they work and you know how you can compare uh, different rides? Segments. All right, we've uh, we've seen a, a nice uptick in segments-related questions lately. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do have segments. Um, let's see, what would be a good one here? Let's say see you West Hills. So here's a big ride of mine that I did a long time ago when I used to ride bikes. Fairly <laughs> okay. Um, so here's our trip show page. Um, I've got my metrics here, and then I've also got segments down here. So I can hover my mouse over the segments here and see them. Um, I can actually click on them to uh, get some specific uh, information about that segment. So I can actually, you know, what was the distance, what was my time, some other various stats on there. Um, And we'll just, you know, we'll give you a whole list of segments down here. Uh, you know, as many as you can. This is obvious. This is a, a very popular ride in our West uh, West his, West excuse me West Hills here uh, in Portland. Um, so I match on a, a lot of segments. So I can collapse those. Uh, we can all, we also have a climbs and descents uh, thing here. So we'll detect based off criteria. We'll detect climbs and uh, let's see clear selection climbs and hills. So you can kind of hover over these and see that and click those. And we'll also give you some specific segments here. Um, let's see, let's go back to our home page and we'll click more here. Um, and we will load up segments and photos. So here on uh, photos and segments page, I also have, um, you know, a list of all of my match segments. Uh, let's see if we can get a popular one here. 50 second division of words. So I can click on an individual segment and uh, <clears throat> I can actually then see, you know, the entire leaderboard here. I can uh, click on the time and this will actually give me this individual's time here where I can check speed, grade, various stats here. Um, admittedly, I haven't, well, <laughs> I'm not a segment kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> so I haven't, done this for a while so you, but you can also actually uh 
race segments here. So if I were to select some of these options here and compare efforts and race efforts. Yeah, so this is actually a terrible example, uh, but let's do playback speed back here. Click play. Oh. It, needs, it needs some Benny Hill music. I know, I way. know. I'm gonna write a, a request ticket right now. Uh, yeah, so on a much cooler, more awesome uh, segment, you can actually raise the segments here, pause them, um, and you can actually kind of, uh, you can actually click splits here on the segments as well. And you have uh, options up here so I can split them by none, uh, which is just the entire segment in its entirety. Uh, or I can click, you know, half mile, third mile, quarter mile, excuse me, um, stuff. So, and if I wanted to, I wonder if shift works here. Oh, if it doesn't work. Um, oh, maybe it does. I was trying to shift click and see if I could select a bunch of them. So you could, you know, get wild and select, you know, a lot of people on a long <laughs> statement and actually see, you know, where they gained time, where they lost time, stuff like that. Cool. So. <clears throat> yeah, we we actually when when we used to ride a lot too, we were we were within the top, I think at least the top twenty for the Pittock Mansion climb, which is oh that's, well, that's done. a steep one. <laughs> How many years ago was that, Russ? You mind? Uh, probably like. <laughs> five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thanks for the question, uh, JP. We've got a question here from Steve Fuller and um, it's, can you, uh, all right. Yeah. There you go. You've got the floor. Hey, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Kevin. Hey, Steve, you uh, bet. Uh, the, the tip you gave with the, uh, with the little uh, yellow man icon, is is super helpful and kind of dovetails into the question I had, which was, are there any plans for uh, coming up with some sort of map layering? Uh, so I do a lot of event planning and mm -hmm. uh, my big two things are, you were talking about different types of gravel. A lot of what I am concerned about is pavement, gravel and dirt and kind of being able to take that map and like basically blast all of the paved levels off mm -hmm. and have the gravel show up in one color and have dirt show up in another color. What I could kind of what I do now is I have to, I'll use something like ride with GPS, which is what we use for our organization for our mapping. Yep. But then I'm always going back and forth between uh, PDF maps, uh, my state, which is Iowa. Mm -hmm. They're kind enough to give us color coded maps. So I can see like, okay, these green roads are dirt. These are gravel. Everything else is kind of paved. Uh, I know, you know, obviously every state kind of supplies their mapping data in, in different formats, but is there any plan to kind of do something like that in the future? So really, really, really good question. Um, and I will say that we will be doing close to what you're, uh, close to what you're asking for. There are no plans to uh, be able to kind of toggle different layers on right now. Um, although some of the groundwork for that will be happening over the next one month and then three to four months. So I'd mentioned popularity-based routing. Uh, coming shortly after that will be the uh, surface type implementation into the actual route line themselves. Um, and then here sometime later this summer, um, perhaps one of our biggest projects of the year will be uh, vectorizing our RWGPS uh, map styles. So this means that we'll be working on kind of turning our map tiles into high definition, uh, making them much smaller. So let's, let's say in the mobile app sense, download, download sizes for routes, even though they're not big now, will be much smaller. Uh, we'll be able to add in cool things like topographic relief and shading relief. Um, and then that will then lead to us being able to uh, put surface type onto the map tiles themselves. So you will not actually have to plan the route in order to see that you have routed onto a dirt road. You will be able to look at the map. And I, I just turned to our kind of RWGPS map styles to give kind of a... <clears throat> A, a bad example, but something that you could see um, where as you have 
you know, kind of more prominent roads that are styled in yellow side roads here in white. Uh, this is, you know, Phil's trail area out in Bend's mountain biking spot where you have blue that are preferred mountain biking trails uh, denoted by blue and then more walking preferred ones denoted by green here. So um, throw out that this is a big mountain biking area and kind of imagine that this would be surface type when you're planning routes in Iowa. So you, you know, have some, you know, y'all would have a really crazy grid of a bunch of different right turns out there. Um, and you'd be able to just see like, oh, I'm not going to go here because I can see that this actually says it is dirt or it is gravel. And I'm going to stay on this paved one for another couple of miles. And then I'm going to go on this other gravel road. Um, and this kind of gets back into some of the work of taking all these different classifications of, you know, type one dirt, type two dirt, you know, type class, yada, 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 gravel, and consolidating them down into, you know, something that's appropriate for route planning. Um, so that is, that will be the next big thing that we're working on later this year, um, which we've, we're very, very excited about. So is that a, is that a little bit of an add on? Is that a case of you guys pulling that data from state agencies or do you rely on other organizations to get that, that road type data? This will be, um, <clears throat> this is also open street maps data because they do have kind of a worldwide, people have always just like, hey, why don't you implement surface type everywhere in the universe? And we just be like, well, show me a universal data set of all this stuff and we'll do it. <laughs> um, and, but, oh, it's, and you know, they're like, well, I don't have that. It's like, we don't have that either. But we, we do have that through OSM and the license that we pay for OSM to, you know, you help utilize their routing in addition to uh, some of the map types that we offer in our inner planner. Um, so uh, yeah, that's where we'll be getting the data. Um, and it's kind of, you know, again, it's piecemealed. Um, we've looked at a lot of, we have a very kind of geographically diverse uh, workforce here. So we've been able to look at a bunch of different areas based on kind of, you know, where each of us are from. I'm from Kansas. And Dan, who's actually, he's the engineer doing most of this work, is from New York. So we've been able to kind of look at different areas. And because, you know, I, you know, you could point me anywhere in the world and be like, and ask me, is this a dirt road? It's like, well, you know, the data says it's a dirt road, but how would, how would I know? Um, so we've been able to kind of um, <clears throat> troubleshoot these areas by taking the data that we do have and then, you know, putting it up against areas that we're, uh, familiar with to, you know, confirm what we need to confirm. Thanks. Cool. Great question. Um, so I'm curious, is, is there a, a page or, or a link where if pe where people can submit feature requests? Uh, not a page, but by all means, uh, email info at ridewithgps.com. Um, that's where we get probably everything right now uh, for requests. So um, you know, we'd love to hear from, we love hearing questions, especially now when we're all locked away in our dungeons, we love talking to people. We, you know, right in, uh, we're here to help. We're here to chat. Um, you can do that or down here uh, on the website, we have a little, uh, question mark icon. You can submit a support ticket, uh, straight, straight from the website as well. Cool. Any other questions in the zoom room before I go into YouTube chat, um, raise a little blue hand. Um, okay. So we've got a question here from Machiko in the <laughs> chat. Of course she's here. <laughs> uh, I know that she's like a, a power user. Um, this one's pretty specific. Uh, oh boy. Ja ja <laughs> no. So she asked, Japanese Google map doesn't have a quote unquote bicycle layer. So route planning is actually quite different. Um, is there a ride with GPS plan around it? I mean, this might be too soon, but. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I have an answer for you. Finally, not with this, but she's, she asked a lot of great questions. Yeah. Uh, we will be, I'm, I don't want to say by the end of this week, but I think by the end of this week, we will be releasing our route plan. We'll be using the entire website and our mobile apps in six new languages. Um, Japanese will be one of those languages. So um, she will have a much more, it will be a lot more familiar for you to plan routes, to navigate routes, to check out your stats, check out everything. 
uh, because we will have everything translated into her prefer your preferred language. Um, in addition to French, Spanish, Italian, German, and Dutch. Mm -hmm. So that's, we've been working on this for months and months and months. Um, and are really, uh, I'm really, I really think we're going to release it at the end of this week. It's going to be pretty cool. Cool. Um, any other questions in Zoom? Um, well, I think we're hitting our hour mark. So if you guys are still in the YouTube chat and enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, Kevin, can you stop sharing your screen for a second? Oh, yeah, you bet. Uh, stop share. Yeah, take us home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Not that, not that. Uh, yeah, thanks for your time. And if you guys, you know, want to do more of a deep dive again, you know, Ryu GPS has a, a pretty in-depth uh, YouTube channel. I know I've searched there, you know, myself looking on how to do specific things. Um, is the, do you guys, and you said you, you're working on new videos to talk about the right click and, and, and all those new features or is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You? We've got a bunch of that stuff doing GIFs, doing other things. Um, we've got a really, and this is actually, thank you for asking that um, because think about it. Uh, under stories here in the website, uh, we've got our really cool web support section. We've got a journal section where we collaborate on other content. We have a news and press section. And this is where we will post uh, this is a primary way to see what we're up to right now. So started with the mobile route planner last year, and now you can see direct file import that just came out today. Uh, we implemented the Garmin uh, wireless courses sync uh, compatibility last week, auto trace. Uh, we partnered with Garmin on the Varia radar stuff, which is now exclusive to uh, our app and being compatible with their new radar devices. So uh, the news and press section is a great place to stay up to date on all of this and get all of the uh, somewhat decent videos that we create. <laughs> They're better than no videos, trust That's me. This, yes. <laughs> that is our belief, yes. Yeah, and David K here uh, reminded me that um, you know, as a Patreon supporter, you do get a discount code uh, yep. to ride with GPS membership. And he asks, is the discount price only for this year? I believe it's only for this year. Uh, I don't know if we put an end date on it. Okay. So as long as Russ keeps paying us money, we'll probably keep the discount around. Right. <laughs> there you go. So another reason <laughs> to uh, support the Patreon, you get a little bit off the, uh, the, the more, the paid paid packages on ride with GPS. Yep. Um, cool. Well, Thanks again, Kevin, for, for joining us. This is super, super helpful. I know that there are a ton of you know, gravel nerds that watch the channel, a lot mm -hmm. of you know, mapping nerds, and it's cool to, to have someone that just understands the system. Um, I'm always surprised at how, how deep the feature set is. Like, I feel like I, I barely scratch the surface, and it seems like every other week there's, you know, there's this brand new thing you can do uh, with Ride with GPS. That's accurate. That's accurate. Yeah. That's really, that's... <laughs> A lot of what we do is figure out how to kind of dig ourselves out of this pile of tools and features that we've built upon ourselves. So um, yeah, working on that stuff. And for all the gravel people, uh, we're going to have some really cool stuff out really soon. Really excited. Cool. So look for the new grab grab updates. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you haven't checked out Ride with GPS yet, you should. It's one of our favorite planning tools. It's a great tool to discover, um, you know, rides where rides in your area or where you're visiting. I feel like there's lots of people that have contributed routes, so it's a great discovery tool. It's how we use it um, a lot personally, and I think uh, that's it. So until next time, everyone, keep the supple side down. Sweet. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, you bet.